might encourage us and lead us and give us his wisdom. And, you know, if he said, if you ask for wisdom, he'll give it to you. So all we got to do is ask and not be double-minded, but just obedient to what he tells us to do. And uh, I believe that. I believe the word and uh, let the word dwell in you richly is what the Bible says and let God's word speak to you and he will encourage you and strengthen you because we need encouragement we need to, to uh, see God's way perfectly and walk in it and watch him bless as people are going to come to Christ through all of this turmoil and stuff and God is exposing sin he's bringing the truth out and uh, we want to walk in the truth that so so let's pray together. Father, we do thank you, Lord, that we call on you and that you would hear us, Lord, as human beings, even as your children. Lord, uh, we know we don't deserve that, but you said you'd hear us and you, you make intercession for us and you died on the cross for our sins so that we could come to you. We thank you, Lord, that you reveal uh, your Father to us, the Holy Spirit, and you have blessed us continue to bless us and this door is being opened help us to walk in those doors Lord we're not capable of doing uh, what you've called us to do but by your power we can do that and be obedient to you Lord and we just pray for each soul Father that, that does not know you Lord that you would uh, touch their lives you would open doors uh, for them to uh, return to you. Many are walking away, Lord, and I pray you'll call them back to you. I thank you for your grace every day. Uh, thank you for your healing power. Thank you for what you did for us now, Lord. And we're honored that you would even listen to us, Lord. And thank you for answering our prayers and for meeting our needs. Thank you for our family and how you're dealing with them and blessing us. Thank you for your great love that you care about us every day. You never leave us nor forsake us. And thank you for your word that speaks to us. And your joy that comes in the morning. And all the things you have for us, Lord. And lead us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pray for Edna. Pray for Edna. Let's see. Um, we go to the phone. We go to the When the roll is called of young, I think y'all y'all also heard that song. I love that song. I know. Have you ever thought about the role? What is the role of being called of young? I mean, well, God one day. Your name. Your name. It's in the book, and if it's not in the book, that would not be a horrible thing. And we have so many today that are perishing. They're, they're leaving this earth without Christ. And there's no coming back and there's no uh, getting right with the Lord because they've gone so far into sin. And that's where we that's where we have to shine as a church, is to be what we are. And to humble ourselves and to be obedient to Christ and what he's called us to do. And I thought about in Genesis, I tell you what, let's go to second testimony first. That's that scripture God put on my heart. The other morning I woke up and the second testimony was just over in the New Testament for the T's and to get the God put the two T's together, the first, second Thessalonians, and uh, the second Thessalonians chapter two. There's so much in the scripture, I'm telling you. And there's so many things that we need as God's people to encourage us. The only thing that really encourages me is the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Uh, I asked the Lord this week, I said, Lord, I need encouragement. I need for you to do something. It's amazing how God does that. He sends somebody to you a lot of times. And uh, we have a, a person that's, been, that's come to us twice. And, uh, and just to encourage us, just to, and, and each one of y'all, y'all encourage us in the Lord to go on. When you care, and, we, and see, that's what we need to do today is to care 
about people. Jesus cares for people, real people. And a lot of times we don't know that. We don't realize that because we get hardened toward different things that don't happen. And uh, I was talking to April, and she said, you know, uh, she said, Daddy, I'm, I, I've got to where I was angry. That because God hadn't answered the prayer. That, you know, that she was hoping God would go ahead and do this. And he hadn't done it. And uh, when, when your children are not going right, it just breaks your heart. I mean, there's nothing that, that upsets a parent more than a child that will not be obedient. And God wants us to be obedient, but he also wants us to pray because you never know what's going to happen. God, uh, at times, he takes and he'll move in a person's life in, in order to get our attention. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about, uh, in verse 7, it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let his will live, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, um, don't believe everything that you see. Uh, you're going to see a lot of things happen in the course of these days. Don't believe everything you see. This is where he's warning us against. Now, I want you to know why people are deceived. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now, here's why. Because they love because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So, how long in your life did you go where you really didn't understand the truth and the truth was revealed to you? And see, you don't have to receive truth. You can say no to it. Proverbs talks about this a lot. And when God brings something to you and he awakens you to it, see, when we live by revelation. I don't know if you get that or not, but if God does not reveal to you what to do, you have to wait on him and seek him until he, he will reveal to you what to do. And when he does that, you, you, don't, you, don't have, you say, well, I, I don't want to do that. Well, don't reject what God's doing because God has a plan and you have to step into that plan. God directs us by his spirit by his word, by people. And he'll use the circumstances to bring us out. If, if we don't want to do it, God will have somebody do it. Have you noticed that? You may not just say, well, I'm not going to say that. I know I need to say this, but I'm not going to say this. I've seen this happen so many hundreds of times. Somebody in church would say it. When, when you didn't say it, somebody else would say it. Because God says, I'm going to have this say it. I'm going to have this thing done. And, and now here's, here's the danger in this. We all know that we deal with people every day and in our family, they can't see. They're blind. They just literally can't see. Because the natural man does not receive the things of God. Right. Now let me tell you something about in your own life. Have you ever been riding along and you've been doing great and all of a sudden you're thinking of something and you think, what in the world am I doing thinking about that job? Mm -hmm. People say, what? what? You say, you know what I hope? How many of you have wanted to take a gun and blow somebody's brains out up down in Washington? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've thought of that. And thought, you know what? That's not If right. I wasn't a Christian, I'd shoot you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi. Yes. I mean, you could just... All of them. I mean, you, you think, well, but, well see, now, that's, now that's the natural man. What I'm yeah. saying. And you'll think things that are natural, yeah. and you'll wonder, and it'll grieve you, because you think, well, I shouldn't be thinking. You should not want to just go in. <laughs> yeah, just... You know. <laughs> and see, they're provoking they Get Holly and Cruz, get them out. To do this. Yeah. The only person that should get scared is Chris. 
And so the devil is trying to do this. But now, listen, we have to walk in truth. We have to trust that God is in charge. But if God tells you to do something, if he tells you to pray a certain way or to do something for him, go ahead and do it. And trust him for the results. Okay, now, now listen to verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, that, 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 that's, that's our government right now. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. The first thing that... The, the, now, here's what, what the president is trying to do now. The first thing... He wanted... Obama did this the first, the first thing he did. He opened it up where we could have abortions around the world. Biden has opened it up where they could have the abortions and we pay for them. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we'll have to pay for them. The money that they tax, we'll have to have to pay for them to kill babies. But yet, they will go out here and save a dolphin and spend thousands of dollars trying to save, and, and, if you, and send you to jail if you mistreat of anything but go and kill a baby. You say, what in the world is this? Well, mm -hmm. see, okay, these people, a lot of them are going to be damned. So we have to wait until that happens. We don't rejoice in that. How many of us, and, and, and this is one of the things that you have to learn to do. We have to learn this, is to forgive. Can we forgive? We can. We're going to have to. We with, have to. With Jesus' help, we can't do it on our own. You've got that right. Yeah. <laughs> Through Jesus. Through Jesus. And when things are going to happen now, that you're going to have to forgive. I mean, if, you, if it takes getting away from watching the news, if it takes getting away, we have to have a sound mind. We have to have a mind. If we do have a mind of Christ. It's like, I forgive, and then I turn... YouTube on and I listen to him just for five minutes and then the hate's back. Yes. Don't listen to him. Yeah. yeah. We, we just have to quit. It's, it's like you, you hear something that he does and then it's back again. Yeah. Because he does something. He, he's always doing something that's stupid. That's right. But is it up to us to correct that? Uh, nothing no. goes through. Vengeance is Nothing Lord. happens right. that hadn't been through God's hands. He's still in control. Control. We're not. He is. Bingo. But they had pleasure. But listen to this. But, but I want you to listen to verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the, of the truth. For until he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize today how wonderful it is the fact that you have believed on Christ? I mean, Thank uh, take, take the millions and billions of people in this, in this whole world. They're not going to heaven. We are. So he says, listen, you've been blessed. You received the truth. I don't, I mean, I go back to my salvation and I think, Lord, I didn't, yeah, I wasn't seeking God. God was seeking me. God was calling me. And, and how did I respond? I responded in a positive way, but I could have been, he has mercy on whom he will, and whom he will, he hardens. And you think, Lord, why would you harden somebody? Because they don't love the truth. See, the truth is falling in the streets now. It's just like, it does, we don't, we don't want to miss this. But let me tell you something. God's got a purpose in this, and he's bringing us close to him. Now you listen, uh, look in uh, chapter 3 and verse 16. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Paul is encouraging us to walk with the Lord. He is a very present help in time of trouble. And the reason he's allowing this thing to do is to wake us up. Uh, did you know you cannot please God without faith? Mm -mm. Right? Mm -mm. It's impossible. Right. You cannot please God without faith. That's what Hebrews 6, uh, 11 and 6 says. Uh, but without faith, 
God, you, you, there's no way on the sun. But go to 1 Corinthians 13. I want to show you something. Is there anything more important than faith? Mm -hmm. If you can't please God, you, right? You, that's what we say. You've you got to have faith, right? Is anything more important? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. This is a love chapter. Now, when God talks about love, he's not, he's not talking about our love. He's talking about his love that he puts in us. Charity. There's a difference between a man can see somebody. We love our family. Uh, just like we're talking about, we love animals. We love this. I love banana pudding. I love, you know, <laughs> probably the most, most uh, uh, misused word in that the English language. Sure is. We, we say that, but we do we mean that. I love my pickup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. My yeah. boat. Yes. Uh, and, and but most of the time, and, and in chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. Uh, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, now listen to this, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am what? Nothing. Nothing. God says, you see, there are religious people, and we can be very religious. I've been down this road. It's a hard road. You can be very religious. Oh, I've got this faith, and I can do this, and I'm this, and I'm that. God says, actually, you're not. You're nothing. This pastor was talking about he went to a, a beach, and uh, he said there was a lot of people out there, and he said there was two or three of these guys that was carrying signs around and saying, uh, you're going to hell. And uh, you said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How are you, are you this love or what? What would, what would have been the wise thing to do? If you're going to sit around and you're going to say, I'm going to hold this banner up. Why don't you just go to somebody and talk to them about the Lord? I mean, there's an approach that, that Christians make sometimes that are just not correct. And God said, listen, this is the way to handle this. The best thing a, per a parent could do a lot of times in dealing with children is to admit your faith. Just be honest with them. Just say, you know what, I, I blew it in life and I didn't live a perfect life. And I hadn't always obeyed and I hadn't done this and done that. And the reason that I tell you this is because I don't want you to make the mistakes I make. Kids love for you to be honest. But that, that, you know, that, listen, there's no need in us putting on them like we have never done anything wrong. And I, now, now, Connor, he picks up on me because he's like me. And if I say something I used to do, he thinks, <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, all right. That's all right. I can go yeah, do that. I can do that. Well, okay. Pepper used to do that. I'm going to go do it too. All right. So we, we, we go through things like this. But to be honest with them, to me, is the best thing. Just be honest with them. You don't have to put on. You don't have to act no, like yourself, no, right? The road to destruction is what it oh, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> but that, that's, that's it. What, what people, that they always need to understand. Just like Trey, he's a young man. He's got things he, he dabbles with and he plays with. That's why you have to pray. That's why you pray for Troy, you pray for your children, you pray for your grandchildren, you pray for your family, that they would understand. Just like we were going wrong, God intervened in our life, and even as a Christian, a lot of times, we have a done right. And we may need to understand this. I mean, in our family, we've had people that's done awful things. And I mean, I was hurt to the cold. I couldn't stand it. I thought, I can't believe this has happened. But you know what? Here's, here's what scares me. If your children do something that's out of hell, or if your grandchildren, you have to be very careful that they know how to come out of that thing. My, my, my daughter had given Connor a text last night. It was so beautiful. It was so sweet. And because she Not was all from hell. But for his aunt. His aunt texted it to him. Yeah. And it, it but she was being honest. But it meant a lot to him. Huh? 
It meant a lot to him. It meant a lot to him. See what I'm saying? We, we can act like we're, you know, this and that. I did well forget the first time I heard my daddy say it. It wasn't a cuss word to me. It was just it like manure, but you know, he didn't say it that way. But you know how it is. Uh, I still, I still <laughs> got a few. Yes, we all do. That's yeah. the whole thing. Hey, but we get mad stuff. enough. Yeah. You know, we 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 won't say something. Well, uh, people are listening. <laughs> they're listening every time you do something wrong. Well, how do you get over that? I mean, we're humans, right? Yeah. You say, well, I, and you feel bad oh, about it. God. But just being honest, it's hard to be honest. When when God came to Adam, what did Adam do? Uh, Adam had done sin. Yeah, covered himself up. He, oh, he, he went did. That's right. He went dead in the bushes, yeah. wrapped himself up, yeah. and God said, "Where are you, Adam?" Now, now that, that wasn't for him. God wasn't asking for information. Uh, he knew where he was. He knew where Adam was at. He was trying to get Adam to see where he was at. Now, Adam being a man, I'm blaming no more. Blame blame no more. more. <laughs> you would have to say that. I uh, know. I knew what he was thinking. Yes, God, that woman you gave me. He was actually, <laughs> he was actually it's God. I was doing all right, boy. You gave me this woman. You see what she's doing. Blamed it on the woman. Yeah, she's out here eating fruit off of a tree. Messed up the whole world. That's right. Now let me ask you something. What what Told was it? <laughs> what was it? What was it in, in Eve and Adam both that caused them to do that? What do you think caused the cluster? The devil. The devil. The devil? Was it the devil or was it? That would make me do it. Yeah. <laughs> or was it the fact that they weren't content and they didn't really trust God because God said you can't have that tree yeah. and they said and the devil says, Come here, let me talk to you. <laughs> if you really knew what God was doing, so they doubted God worse. Now how many times do we do that? God gives us a promise, we doubt it, we go through a storm. We're walking on the water in church, and we get out of church, and all of a sudden, we're underneath the water. We wonder what happened. Well, you got your eyes on Jesus. You got your eyes on the circumstances of this government or whatever. We're to focus on Him and what He's doing, and walk with Him because He never failed. Now, you may think He failed, but He never failed. And and when uh. It's amazing to me, but let, let me just let me touch on forgiveness. If you don't forgive, Trey, have you ever been mad at anybody? Hey, uh, <coughs> let me let me um, tell them what uh, we had ordered yeah. some books, and it says these are if you want one, if you read "Forgiving What You Can't Forget," it's a good book. That woman if there, y'all don't know the hell that woman was. But it's a good book. It's a good book. She gave a testimony. But, but to forgive, let me tell you something. We have, the last year has been a forgiving time. You don't always forgive overnight. Now you say you do, but you don't. Because mm -hmm. when it comes up again, well, I'm like, you know, Answer you the try question. to figure it out. So you mm -hmm. talk about it. And the more you talk about it, the worse it gets. Is there anybody in your life that you have, and and I agree, I agree with this as I was studying. One of the things that you need to always do is confrontation. We don't like that, but I'm just saying. The best thing that God said to do was you go to that person. That stops Satan. That stops the attack. That puts your mind at ease, and you say, listen, that hurt me what you did, and I want to now, at times we didn't do that. We just let it go. Well, all that does is fester stuff. And then pretty soon, it takes you longer to work through it. What, if, it, what if it was 40 years ago? Well, you just have to, well, okay. I'm gonna tell you what Dr. Stanley said. This Wait. person's already dead. Maybe. Maybe not. 
but you can forgive. If you yes. can't, if you can't undo it, then you can't undo it. Yes. If you can, you'd be better off to get on the telephone and call them and say, "Listen, I, I blew this thing. I've been angry. I've been upset, and I want you to forgive me." And they'll say, "Oh no, you hadn't done this. You, had, I mean, you say yes, I did. And I'm just telling you, I'm owning up to what I did, and I want to be honest with you. This is not easy." and confess it and say this is what I did and God let me tell you something you laying on your deathbed you don't care about anybody as far as getting right with God you want to get right with God because you fit in the face right, right. and God says you need to fear me you need to think about what you're doing that if you're angry with somebody without a cause you're in danger of judgment now what he said in Corinthians here at the last part is there's three things and the light is about it, faith, hope, and charity. And which one of these is the greatest? Charity. This one? Charity. charity. That's greater than faith. Faith works by love. That's the way faith works. So if we don't have love, what he's saying here, he's not comparing, he, what he is, he says, but now by the faith, hope, charity, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. That's the last verse, 13, 13. So you can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't have charity, God's love with what you're doing, then you miss the whole thing in life. You're missing life. You're missing, things are not going to go your way. Uh, they're just not. And when you have an opportunity to help people, or to humble yourself, or to say something, or to be used of God, and God wants you to do that. Now, uh, Ronald, let me ask you something. I know that y'all have a lot of family. Y'all do stuff with family. What makes y'all do that? I What makes y'all do that? For one, that's the way I was raised. That's the way you raised, what? But you love your family. You love your, I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. We believe it's important. It is yeah. important. And that's, see, if you want to know what's happening to America, that's what's happening to America. I agree. We're separating families. That's what Satan's main thing is to bust up the family. That's right. If you can bust the family up, you got it right then. Bust yeah. the marriage up and bust up the family. That's it. Right that's then. it. And that's what's happening. That's what happened with our family. We just got busted up. Tell you something else too. If you see a family having a quarrel, don't jump in there. No, don't. <laughs> no, you're right about that. Uh -uh. But stay out of it. Stay, stay out, out of it. That's it. it. <laughs> so, and and we have we have made amends. I had to go confront my family. I had, that was one thing God wanted me to do, and I called them together, and they got aggravated, and they got mad. And I don't care. I got to do what God told me to do, and I just wanted to get right about it. Well, it's taking time, and God's worked it out, and now the fellowship is back. It's not like maybe I'd like for it to be. It's back I, with you. I sit at home lonesome because I have no family. Yes. I have no one. I have no friends. I don't have your part of the family because right. they don't they right. don't visit with me. But there are people that, and, and that's America. That's what I'm saying. It's a separation of family. It's you do your thing, I do mine. Now, we used to have family reunions, but we don't have that anymore. Well, my family was like that, too. Yeah. You know, you know what that, though? So, so mine was, my family we got together. My family, when I was growing up, we had company. We, oh, we my visited. Goodness. Mama had company every day, drinking coffee, and I enjoyed that. So much of my family's gone. You know, yeah. That's it. Well, all mine's gone. Yeah. But Except do you know why we don't have that? It's because we're selfish. Well, my family is. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Drunk. Yeah. Drugs. And, and God tells us don't fellowship with that. And you, yeah. you know, I stay away time. from them. I, I, we used to go to family reunions with everybody. I don't care what they did. We don't and have we family reunions. And I, and, and mm -hmm. I talked to them about the Lord. They're liable to cuss me out or want to cuss me out. 
tell me to shut up. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's all right. We don't have a big family. We don't. Well, we, we don't. We have a family reunion. Y'all welcome to come. Amen. You know that. See, what I love yeah, about y'all. See, y'all have family. They die in. They always invite us. See, that's, always what, that's, that's what's missing today. When you think you're better than somebody, when you think you're too good to be around somebody, when you think you're superior, and uh, we had a person tell us that yes, they had made fun of their home. The big church. Uh. Made fun of their home. Said they don't live in a nice they don't live in a home. Word, I'm thinking, why would anybody ever say such a thing? That made me so mad. I just can't Now, what was we all raised in? We didn't. We nothing. never had nothing. 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 Don't come to mind then. So uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, why would people want to act like that? We're all, hey, we're flesh and blood. And I don't care if you got millions of dollars, you ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave it all bare on one side. Right. Every bit of money he had, he left it right here. <coughs> I had a black man I worked with for years and uh, lived at Plain Dealing. And he invited me to his family reunion every year up at Plain Dealing. I, went, I went up there know. every year. Terry mm -hmm. Diane, they Amen. invited us to their family reunion. Every that, time they have, I mean, that's since a, we've been known, yeah, that's the best home cooking I've ever eaten. <laughs> Good. I uh, bet. But you know, sometimes we have to humble ourselves. Uh, okay, for years I fought this. You know, I thought, you know, they're not right with God. Well, how did you know that? You think them people are? Well, they're Methodists, boy. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. They're Methodists. Well, now, wait a minute. The saved Baptists are like this. Saved Baptists have lost Baptists and lost Baptists. Okay? Yeah. You know, but I'm saying we miss the fellowship. We miss the joy of the Lord. And Satan has done that a little bit at the time. That's soon. why I love us getting together and eating. I yes. thinking the yeah. same thing. That's why I love doing that. Because we, we have that fellowship. Right That's right. And, and see, so you need that. Mm -hmm. Each one of us needs it. We're going to face this world this week. You need to know that God's on your side. Turn, turn to Romans 8 this minute. Close it back to Romans. Romans 8 and 1. Romans 8. And 28. Well, Verse 26. He said, uh, Romans 8 and 26. It's good to not just read the Word of God, but let God read you. You know, a lot of times we're. When, you, when, we, when we go places and when we do things, we think about ourselves. You know? we're, we're centered on ourselves. Jesus said, Deny yourself, pick up 